Bitcoin will never die as long as there's one person alive in this world that yearns for freedom. Despite losing the ability to collect taxes, MicroStrategy and MicroStrategy CEO Michael Saylor increases the company's assets by another 2,500 Bitcoin. As long as there's at least one person in the world that understands Bitcoin and yearns for freedom, right, it will continue. It is a, uh, a decentralized ideology and you can't kill an idea. Like, well, you can't kill an idea until nobody is left on earth that believes in the idea, right? And the idea is freedom and sovereignty. That's the idea manifested in a technology protocol. Despite selling Bitcoin for the first time ever to earn a tax benefit, the software company run by Michael Saylor raised its holdings by 2,500 Bitcoin. Here are the details. Michael Saylor's MicroStrategy bought 2,395 Bitcoin for $42 million in cash between November 1st and December 21st. It then sold 704 Bitcoin at a loss on December 22nd to offset previous capital gains. MicroStrategy then bought 810 Bitcoin on December 24, Christmas Eve. Out of the 159 Bitcoins that will ever exist, MicroStrategy currently holds one. What are your opinions on this? It appears like Michael Saylor gave his Bitcoin investment a lot of deliberation. Fed took us into a steep nosedive, nearly crashed the currency when they took the interest rates from 280 basis points to 180 to 5 basis points. And then they pulled up and they brought the interest rate from 12 basis points up to 470 basis points in a one-year treasury. And it's kind of like that uh, strafing run in Maverick when the guy goes down in the valley, nearly crashes and pulls up and pulls 10 Gs and just about rips the wings off the plane. That's what we're doing, except we're doing it with the entire $500 trillion economy right now and we've got to the point where the pilots are blacking out i don't think the economy of the world will take much more of the pulling up otherwise they're going to crash every single economy we're going to see more inflation and the combination of those things are going to play out against the new reality which is bitcoin is the only digital commodity it is the only crypto asset there is no second best crypto asset Hey, it's true that Michael Saylor enjoys Bitcoin. Do you recall when Michael Saylor urged taking out as much debt as you could to get Bitcoin when the price was almost $60,000 per unit, stating that he knew how it would all turn out? Did he predict a Bitcoin price below $20,000? Do you recall this? If I told you I know how it all ends, right? Once you know how it all ends, that the, the only use of time is how do I buy more Bitcoin? <laughs> but take all your money, buy Bitcoin, then take all your time, figure out how to borrow more money to buy more Bitcoin, then take all your time and figure out what you can sell to buy Bitcoin. And if you absolutely love the thing that you're that you don't want to sell it, go mortgage your house and buy Bitcoin with it. And if you've got a business that you love because your family works for the business that's in your family for 37 years and you can't bear to sell it, mortgage it, finance it, and convert the proceeds into the hardest money on earth, which is Bitcoin. So what I would say is use all your time to acquire Bitcoin, finance entities and weaker currencies to buy Bitcoin, or educate yourself on why this makes sense if you're not sure. And then educate everybody around you. You know, if you're working for a company that's got $100 million in the treasury, you ought to convince the CEO and the board of directors to convert the treasury to Bitcoin. That's the most creative thing you can do. That'd be worth billions to them. It's like, if you were to say to me, Mike, it's the year 2000, you're in Argentina. What's the best use of your time? The best use of my time is figure out how to get all of my money converted into dollars and get it out of Argentina <clears throat> because I'm going to lose 99.5% of the money if I don't. Nothing else matters. Ensure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that we can keep you updated on the entire cryptocurrency market with one video per day. With SEC employees under fire, the federal fraud case involving Sam Bankman-Fried, FTX, and other parties is getting increasingly heated. According to a tweet by at Scott underscore Lou underscore is, Gary Gensler Crony just resigned from the SEC due to an improper relationship with Sam Bankman-Fried. 
You may recall that the SEC hired this former CFTC commissioner to serve as its own general counsel in 2021. Well, this is the most recent. SEC General Counsel Dan Berkovitz announced that he is departing from his role at the agency effective end of the year, the agency said. Berkovitz was an ally of FTX within the financial regulatory agency and had meetings with SBF and other crypto lobbyists. So the scandal and fraud surrounding FTX are becoming worse. Solana Sol is down 94% from its all-time high. Total value down from Sol down 98%. The top NFT projects in Sol are moving to Matic. Anyway, a large number of democratic organizations intend to return a large portion of the funds they receive from FTX, at least over $10 million. Five groups at least have said they intend to return FTX political contributions. Therefore, it is clear that they were unaware that he was defrauding. Do you believe they ought to act in this manner? Political organizations in the United States are stating one by one that they will refund the millions that SBF gave to them. According to CNBC, the pro-democratic Senate Majority PAC announced today that it would seek to return $3 million in donations from former FTX CEO SBF and former FTX head of engineering Nishad Singh. The Democratic National Committee, the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee, and the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee announced four days ago their intention to return 850000 in contributions they have received from Bankman Freed in the last few years. Republicans have not yet indicated whether they want to send their dark money to SBF. But please let me know what you think of this in the comments section. And bear in mind that things are becoming hotter once more. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so that we can keep you up to speed on anything related to cryptocurrency. If you find value in the video, please like it. Kevin Spacey, the judge who heard Trump's case, and many more people will be up against SBF. Sam Bankman Fried's case will now be presided over by a no nonsense Manhattan judge who has handled a number of high profile cases. A judge who presided over cases against Donald Trump and Prince Andrew will now preside over SBF's upcoming federal criminal trial. A lawsuit filed by former journalist E. Jean Carroll against Donald Trump, who allegedly defamed her by denying that he owed her in the 1990s, is currently being heard by the same judge. Carroll is accusing Trump of defamation and acted as the judge in a civil case brought against actor Kevin Spacey for allegedly engaging in an unwanted assassination. The 78-year-old judge has been described by the media as having a no-nonsense style and is known for quick decisions. He is also no stranger to the crypto world. He oversaw the first federal Bitcoin securities fraud prosecution. Hopefully, Sam Bankman-Fried won't be able to deceive this judge. Now that we're in the bear market, it feels to me like 2018 in the world of cryptocurrencies. There are numerous instances of fear, doubt, and other unfavorable emotions. However, there are several opportunities, and there are likely to be numerous opportunities for the foreseeable future. According to a tweet by at DC Investor, this seventh month period on the ETH chart from September 2017 to April 2018 was one of the most ridiculous periods of my adult life. Unless you're there, it's hard to convey how insane this all felt. The fundamental progress that has occurred and is still occurring is being overlooked by most people. The trade volume on Uniswap reached over 620 billion in 2022, with 68 million transactions coming from 3 million different wallets. That is a lot. Just like the historical video from 1995, why should I be on the internet? Like cryptocurrency, the internet was once a novel technology. Hey, why should I be on the internet? Why? Well, by the time we're in college, the internet will be our telephone, television, shopping center, and workplace. And it's already got more stuff in it than you could possibly imagine. In less than an hour, you can visit the planet Jupiter, take a tour of the Sistine Chapel, do research on the rainforest, get soccer scores for a team in Italy, chat with a friend in Australia, and I even found a recipe for cat food cupcakes. Shouldn't everybody be on the internet? Yes! yes!